What's up, everybody? This is Chris, and I'm one of the hosts of Crucial Tunes. It's a podcast where me and my buddy Larry, we sit around and talk about music. We talk about music we like, music we don't like. We talk about new music, old music, mainstream, underground. We talk to some local bands. We do it all. So if you like music, why don't you tune on in? Crucial Tunes. Every other Friday on the Journey into Comics Network. The following, the following, the following. Is a Journey into Comics. 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 Network. 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 Production. Production. Standing in an astounding five foot eight and a half, chubby and semi attractive. It's What's up, ladies and gentlemen? This is Podcast Fee episode 87. I'm your host, Dick, and returning for the first time in, I think, three three weeks. Three weeks. We got Tyler. I'm back. He's back. For one week. For one week. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Our schedules have been, or his schedule has been kind of in flux, right? Uh, Yeah, it's just... I, I don't think we've even talked about that like at all. He just kind of said, "Hey, I, I'm a, I'm unavailable in like the next two weeks." So there was a there was a my brain stopped working there for a second. There was a, like a short period of time where I was in a roundabout way forced to work nights temporarily. Um, that came and went, and then it was well. Here is the end of the school year, and the most difficult stuff you've ever tried to learn in your life, and I'm not going to teach it to you. Um, but I'm going to say that I'm teaching it to you. Mm-hmm. So the same, kind of the same uh, runaround that I've been talking about the whole school year. Um, and it's been a very trying time for my brain. Yeah. Um, super, like... What I've figured out over the school year is I am not entirely a math dummy. I can I can do me some math. Addition, got it. Some subtraction, subtraction. Subtraction. Subtraction, oh, I can do it. A little division and multiplication, I got you. Give me some formulas, I'll figure it out. But super complex, abstract, not applicable, ever really unless you're an engineer level math it's pretty tough and then it's already hard enough and then you don't have someone not necessarily holding your hand but um shepherding you through the process and expecting you to get it in a very finite amount of time while screaming at you this is the most difficult thing of the year (laughs) Okay, why why did we not structure the curriculum so we could kind of build up to this in a reasonable way and we move from one facet of the subject to the next so it's all cohesive and it all makes sense and you know blah 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 blah. And then now I have a I so tomorrow I have my final exam for my history class. That's cake. Um but Monday I have my last test of the year academically. It's on electrical code. Oh. Like, like, uh, not like coat, like typing code, but like straight up. Like the laws of yeah. electricity. Yes. Um, from a government down to a consumer level. Um, we have not, we have not gone over code at all this year. Awesome. So, Went to class last night, uh, spent an hour and a half not knowing how to go through the code book and, you know, trying trying to zone out as much as I can because anything that's being 
spoken about at that point in time is just a waste, you know. So you, you know how I do when I shut my brain off. The world around me is just dead. Yes. Yeah, so did that. Been trying to get caught up on Game of Thrones. I told you right before we started. If Skylar and I watch three episodes a night for the next five days, we will be totally caught up. And I had some stuff spoiled for me yesterday. Like, late last night. Yeah. Pretty upset about it. Because it's one of the things, and I don't know if we want to talk, of, like, actually say what they are. We're going to wait until Thursday. The game, of, the real Game of Thrones talk is Thursday. Okay. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, it's it, like the main, like, I'll just, I'll just in a roundabout way say it. There was some character deaths mm-hmm. that one of them I, I knew was going to happen just because of the character's arc. It made sense. Yeah. It felt right. Uh, the other one upset me pretty bad. And if you go back to any of the podcasts I've ever been on where I talk about Game of Thrones, and I talk about if this person dies, I am legitimately going to be pissed. Um, and there's not there's not very many people on that show that I care about. I mean, I can run through my list real quick. Jorah's my number one man. Braum, he's number two. Jamie's number three. Everybody else after that is just kind of, eh, I don't really care. So, if that answers mm-hmm. one of the things for you there. Yep. So pretty upset. Um, what does what does my wife say? She says, Stop talking Game of Thrones. I'm just I'm just explaining that, and like, it's not even that, that I'm so upset that that this spoiler took place. It's how it was given to me because I was reading something. That was totally unrelated to mm. this past Sunday's episode. And I'm scrolling and I'm reading. And then I get to the bottom of the paragraph and it's like, blam, this happened. You can't avoid it at all. Wow. And I, I was I was legitimately pissed. Wow. So um, I got no warning whatsoever that that was going to be at the bottom of that paragraph. And what I was what I was reading about was totally unrelated. At all. So, pretty pretty sad. Well, if it makes you feel better, they did it right. Other than it being so dark you can't see. But <sighs> People are complaining about that. I know. And there are some people that have legitimate complaints, like, in terms of, yeah, it was dark. And I will admit, like, I – it was really dark. However, a lot of people had the issue – like, had compression issues, mm-hmm. which – it was pixelated and it just wasn't it wasn't shown right but however mine I, I feel like if this was presented in 4K HDR it would have been fine still dark but fine right but well, that's the po- the whole point of this episode was it's it's the long night right well and, and i i um you, they're trying to they're trying to they're trying to put you in the mood that all the people there and mm-hmm. they can't see either well and i read <laughs> uh I read uh, kind of a, a quick exposition from the directors, directors slash producers of the, the show, specifically that episode. They said if you go back and watch season one through, say, the first half of season five, which Skylar and I have done recently, yes, um, there are there are certain episodes where things are ex- exponentially brighter than they should be, so. The first five seasons, they shot a lot of stuff outside during the daytime, so they had all the natural light. And then, like us in the studio, they had artificial light on top of that to make those scenes and those episodes super, super bright because it's summer. Mm -hmm. And they they wanted from episode one of the first season until episode seven. There's seven episodes in the last season or eight. Eight, I think. Okay. So until episode eight of the final season, they want you as the viewer to see that transition of just the environment. So had that scene been shot in season one, you would have been able to see everything in perfect detail. But like you said, it's the long night. You're fucking in it. Yes. 
So it, I was, it, it, it was a level of immersion that they really wanted. Thank you. To get That's across. the word I was looking for. Um, and and hey, boy, you got it because you for the longest time you can't tell shit from shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's a lot of scenes up, uh, a lot of blizzard blizzardy scenes. That you can't see shit in either. But, I mean, it makes sense. It's it a does. fucking blizzard at nighttime. It does. With magic. hmm It happens. Um, but, even though I haven't seen it, uh, you know, I, I, I did, I have done what little research I can to stay spoiler-free, um, you know. Uh, it's uh, ironic what gets me is the stuff that's not related at all, so. Yeah. Uh, how how are you enjoying season five so far? Season five, uh, not a big fan. Yeah. From every from everything I've read, everywhere, um, everyone says that it's the worst season. It's a lot better the second time around. I really hated it the first time. I was really bored with it. It is especially a, coming off season four. It is a very slow season. It's it's a character building season, mm-hmm. and a lot of it's unnecessary character building. Yeah, most of the stuff with Arya in season five, anyway. You know, it's all kind of unnecessary. Um, I mean, obviously, all the stuff with John becoming Night Commander and stuff like that. I think that's obviously relevant for what comes yeah. at the end of season five. <laughs> yeah, I I have seen the end of season five. Skylar has not, so I will not spoil that. Um, but yeah, it, it just. Anything that takes place close to the wall is to just heighten tensions for what's coming, the wildlings, and then obviously introduce everything that's going on in the east, you know, across yep. the sea. So Yep. It's not it's not awful. I actually you know, if season five was the last season and I had to pick between season five and season three, I'll pick five all day. Three's three is not an enjoyable season for me. Three was okay. I mean, you have you have the red wedding, yeah, which you know just just storytelling wise is incredible. Um, Starting that season off like it was awesome, mm-hmm. like the start like that that weird um, the way they shot Rob taking uh, whatever. Um, I'm pretty sure that was the very very first episode of mm-hmm. season three. He took took whatever battle, and then he ended up taking Jamie mm-hmm. prisoner. In that battle. Mm -hmm. Very first episode. Yeah, because they said, basically he sent like 1,800 men to their death Mm -hmm. in a ruse. A little military strategy. Huh, I bamboozled you, (laughs) fucking Lannisters. Gotcha. So, I don't know. I'm I'm ready to get caught up and just, I'm not ready for it to be over with. Same. Just because, you know, I was into it so hard. Like season one through three, and then you know I've talked a lot about how it's my wife's fault. I'm not caught up on this show, um, but uh, I'm looking at you, Skylar. I'm 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 really enjoying the experience of watching it with her because, like, I told you and and pretty much everybody else that like season one, season two. I don't know what changed for her. I don't know if it's because we're parents now and there's a lot of family drama and. You know, stuff that we don't have to deal with that really hooked her and made her interested in it. Mm-hmm. You know, she was texting me at work, talking about it, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. You know, I, I, I enjoyed it, um, watching it with Miranda. I mean, but I started it over, watched it all the way through. Well, it's, with her. it's, it's worth it for sure. Oh, absolutely. You know, um, season three, we kind of wavered a little bit, um, just because of, you know, all the same reason I couldn't be here to do the mm-hmm. podcast and shit. It sucks trying to cram Game of Thrones at fucking 9 p.m. at night when you gotta yeah. be up in a couple hours. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's been a really good experience. Um, I'm ready for the end of season five through the end of season seven, just to see how she takes all that. Because I know what happens. Yeah. Obviously. Uh huh. Um, she has no idea at all. Season six was fucking good. Oh yeah. Like, obviously, I haven't seen it, but I know everything that happens. So, um, yeah, just, I mean, like, if if it was only audio, like, imagine if season six was an audio drama, 
just the stuff that certain characters say, it's fucking incredible. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited. Not to get to the end, but to approach the end. Yeah. It's the journey. Mm-hmm. It's the journey. So uh, before we really get into this episode, uh, gonna hit a gonna hit a low note. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am. It, it, it's with a very very heavy heart that I have to say, uh, uh, Richard, former guest of the show, is uh, no longer with us. He uh, there are no details of what happened. We can only make assumptions. And I don't really want to speculate. Yeah. Because I don't... Richard was always good to me. I mean, obviously, for a lot of people, Richard was a D-bag and, you know, a degenerate. Yeah, he, but Richard was always good to me. Richard was always Richard. That's the way I looked at him. Mm-hmm. Like, he may have been a scumbag, but... He was our scumbag. He was our scumbag. You know, he always... He uh, he was not... He's not a bad guy. He, he was not a malevolent being. He, uh, he... He just did dumb shit. He <laughs> enjoyed doing the dumb shit. He was, uh, like if I had to quantify Richard, he was Danny DeVito's character from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Just not Danny DeVito. Yeah. Lots of drugs too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Richard, uh, it, it just bums me out. Like I'm not, I, I've I said it before. I'm not surprised. None of us are really surprised, especially if like what we think is what happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like, despite being not surprised, we're all shocked. Uh, and it, it's just it's just the biggest bummer because you know I I texted him last Thursday. It was either Wednesday or Thursday. I texted him. He called me a couple weeks ago. And I really, was at, I was at work and I couldn't answer. And I texted him, and he never responded. That's been the issue lately. He's well. I mean, for the long. So he had his accident back in January, mm-hmm. where he, which we think may have been more than just an accident. Um, and then he, his phone just went off. Didn't have act. Didn't wasn't on his phone. Uh, so I I tried texting him several times back then. Waited a couple weeks. Texted him a couple more times. Still nothing. So I just didn't even try for like the longest time. So I went out to where he works or where he got moved to. And oh, I, I forgot he got moved to trim. Yeah. He got moved out the door line and I got sent out to door line. So I texted him. I'm like, I'm on door line, bro. This is like Wednesday or Thursday. And he's like, why? He actually responded. I was like, holy shit. He goes, why? I said, containing a defect. And he just read it. Nothing. So I, I, I kind of suspected something was up. Mm hmm. So I and and on top of that, like so I, I was like, hey man, need to get you back on the podcast sometime. Thinking you know he was always begging, oh yeah, to be on the show any possible time he could. When, hey, when am I gonna be on? When am I gonna be on again? When am I gonna be on again? And um, so I figured that would get a rise out of him. That would that would get some excitement. And and if he did, if it maybe like. If if he was in a low place, he would he would get excited, mm-hmm. you know, and that that'd cheer him up and get him going again. He just read it, no response. Uh, so that so I knew something was up, and uh, so whatever whatever happened happened. Probably if if this was Thursday that I texted him, it happened the next day, mm. and uh, really bums me out. I mean it's. I, 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 y- you always feel guilty in these situations. I know, yeah. I know, f- I know a few people that feel like extra guilty. Um, but at the same time, there's nothing you can do. Mm-mm. Nothing you could have done. I mean, from what I understand, if what is what we think is true, then he had already basically been planning and setting in motion for a little while, mm. uh, knowing some things that I know. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just a giant bummer and it's, and, but at the same time, like I, I talked to Dave Cox today, he, he immediately came, came up and kind of, I think broke the news to Desiree who would like, we heard immediately yesterday, uh, Sean tag 
he says, Hey, Eric Brooks texted me. Uh, he's, he said, Richard's, Richard's dead. I was like, what? So yeah, he's like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it's true, but and then slowly, but surely information just started coming in and th- no details, but just, I, I looked and sure enough, there was, there was no bit, mm-hmm. just a date, a date and an age. That's it. No, no other information, his name. And then, uh, yeah, so, and I, I sat and talked to Dave for a couple minutes and, uh, he, he just kept, he's like, you all right, man? Are, are you all right? Like, it's tough. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm all right. And I, I, I told him, I was like, you know, it's, it's never been my thing to mourn. I, I choose to celebrate because what else can you do? Right. I mean, I, th- I think that's the best way to handle any situation of that sort. Like you, you, you gotta, you can't hang on to the fact that they're gone. You gotta celebrate that they were. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and and look at and look at look at his life. You know, and on top of that, I started thinking like, man, he was on at least five episodes of my show. That's upwards, and at two hours a piece, sometimes three. Mm-hmm. Like that's he was up- definitely on there for a couple three hours. Yeah, that's that's upwards of ten hours of his life. And his personality and just the entire spectrum of Richard because we got a lot – we got we got the whole spectrum. We had we had his stupid idiot moments where he's just a total jackass and just trying to – just being himself, being mm-hmm. funny. We got serious Richard like where he's like serious and passionate about a subject or we got, we got pissed off Richard for like upward – like maybe two minutes. Uh, we got real Richard. Where he's just being real for a second, and it, it, we did we got the whole the whole gamut of him as a person, mm-hmm. and like I feel very fortunate and blessed that we had those moments with him, mm-hmm. and it's all it's all documented, it's recorded. Well, and one thing one thing that I always appreciated about Richard, and and anybody can say whatever they want about him. I mean, especially now that he's gone, he's not going to come back and get you. Mm-hmm. Um, but the guy was devoted to his children. Yeah. And there's a lot of people that claim to be better, a better human being than Richard was, and they're not devoted to their children in the way that man was. So. Yeah. I I I tell people I I've been telling people like, you know, say what you want about Richard, and you know he might not have been the best role model. But he was a damn good dad. I've seen him with I, I saw him with his kids, on more than one occasion. He was always an excellent dad. Mm-hmm. He, like the way he handled his kids, you know. Yeah, he had he he's probably got like eighteen more of them out there that <laughs> no one knows about, probably. <laughs> uh, but you know the, the, the I I feel for that family. If if you walked up to Richard and said, "Hey, man, you're my dad." He would look at you and say, "All right, come yeah, on probably. in. Probably, <laughs> come on in. Yeah, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. I feel, I feel for that family. That's that's a that's a big hole. Uh, that's that's a personality that can never be replaced. You know, he was definitely one of a kind, <laughs> and that's putting it very, very, very lightly. You know, so I would, I would actually like to." Uh, so he had a YouTube account with like only two videos. They're both videos of him singing songs. Mm-hmm. And uh, the way I found out like this was legit was somebody sent me a screenshot of his uh, cousin. I saw it. I know the one you're talking about. Yeah, and it, I, 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 was, I was confused for a minute because she has the same name as his wife. Mm-hmm. So and then – but um, – and this was the video she posted of him. And uh, so I, I listened to it, and I think uh, it definitely it, – I mean it's from, let's see, January 7th, 2015. And, Years ago. Yeah. And it's just – I think it's it's a good it's good represent, representation of him. So we're going to go ahead and play that. I'm just going to go ahead and – 
take away some stuff. This isn't about us. It's about him right now. So this is Richard uh, singing a song apparently called Killing Me. Let's try this. from the stream now <laughs> yeah i thought you know listening to that the uh, last night i was like wow that's that's perfect because mm -hmm. <laughs> all richard wanted to do was have fun and i felt like that's that's one of the things he was all he was always longing for was to just go back to the time when there was no responsibility and he could just be he could just be you mm -hmm. know i mean which is you got to do it. 
you got to get up and you got to face the day. I th- I feel like we all kind of long for those days when we could just innocently be irresponsible, you know? Oh yeah. And not deal with the day to day. Naivety is something that yeah. that a lot of people don't appreciate while they have it. <laughs> yeah. Because the tax mana cometh. And he very, cometh hard and dry. Very well said. So, yeah, that was Killing Me by Richard Olovich. Or at least I hope it was by him. I don't know if it was a cover or not. But either way, it was it performed, performed by Richard Olovich. Uh, gonna miss him, man. Me too. Gonna miss him. Wearing, wearing my Rolo shirt right now. And uh, I told I texted you earlier. I'm like, man, I need a fucking beer. I mean, a lot of that had to do with my work day, but a lot of it also had to do with Richard. So I chose none other than uh, Phoenix Cheers by uh, 450 North. It was delicious while yeah. it lasted for me. Yeah, I gotta I, get a roll of T-shirt now. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure they're still on uh, Teespring. So not that I needed, not that I didn't need one, but you know. Yeah. Or I'll have Skylar make me a shirt. I might just do that. I might have Skylar make me there a shirt. There you go. Yeah, I thought Phoenix Tears was fitting, you know? So, here's to you, Rolo. Here's to you. Uh, Jennifer asks, is Teresa back yet? No. No, Teresa is not back yet. <laughs> I'm still stuck. It sucks. <laughs> Is what it is. Go away, Jennifer. <laughs> yeah, you're not even there. We're sad. You're not at work. I'm not there anymore, which ma- which makes me more sad that Richard's gone. Um. Yeah. Yeah. It's just sad. It is. Like I said, it's it's pretty much the ultimate bummer. Yeah. And a lot of people. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> Cuz when I get when I get sad, I get mad, mad simultaneously. So I think about in my time at Subaru, I think about all the times that like Richard Richard and I had fun and it was fun. Yeah. I mean, I fucking I mutilated myself unintentionally for to just so I could fucking laugh with that guy, you know? <laughs> and yeah, um, I was there. I was right there. Yeah. I was right there working with him. Yeah. You were, you were up there. Um, you know, um, and I think about all the times that certain people were just fucking dick bags to that guy. Yeah. Just cause he existed. And, like, they were the, like, this one person is not anyone who should ever cast stones at anyone else. And it's like, what the fuck, man? Yeah. So, it's sad. It is. And, you know, it was, it's one of those situations where, like, I was always on Richard's team. Maybe towards the end when he was in Sealer, I was kind of on the fence about him because of information I had got. But who knows if that information was even true? And I, I kind of look back and feel bad. Wish I was, wasn't as dissonant as I, as I was. One, you gotta remember too. I mean, as much time as we spend with each other as working professionals, um, you know. Number one, you gotta entertain yourself somehow. Yeah. Number two. You can't spend that much time with someone or around someone and not eventually not be on their team anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, there's going to be periods of time where you step out of their corner to get to look from a different perspective. Um, You know, uh, that doesn't make it bad. I just I don't know how many times I stuck up for him to that team he was on because that what they would do is. They would all make their bets and stuff, and you know, and like they'd make these giant bets with him, saying, "Oh, you can't go X amount of time with without doing this or 
whatever. And he'd be like, whatever, guys, I'll prove you wrong. And they would just like, you know, berate him day in and day out saying, you're not going to do it. You're not going to do it. Yeah. Or they'd, they'd find some way to set it up and get him to do whatever he wasn't supposed to do. Mm-hmm. And, um, I think the I think the one of the bets was like you, you can't go this many days or this many months without missing a day. And like they 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 basically set him up to fail constantly. And I'm like, did you guys ever think that maybe he acts out and acts the way he does and misses all these days and all this shit because you guys are fucking terrible to him? You guys never root for him. You just say you're not going to do it. You're 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 you just you're just you guys are just a constant source of negativity for him, and like that's why he acts out. That's why he acts the way he does. Perfectly and, said. And like I, I said that to them. I said that to them. I'm like, maybe, maybe if someone for once actually rooted him on, he would actually follow through with something instead of giving up. And I, I, I was always in his corner. So like I. Makes me just wonder, like, who who was in his corner? Not very many people. <laughs> no. So, yeah. Thanks for joining, Alex. Yeah, it's uh, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. She says, Miranda just told me, "Holy shit!" Really sorry to hear about this. Appreciate it. Yep. Yep. So, uh. We ready to move on? I think so. I mean, that's a good that's a good chunk dedicated to Richard, and uh, I think we're we're gonna do some more to dedicate to him. And I think what I want to do is I want to do like a best of Richard episode to really <laughs> showcase the character and person he was. Because like I said, we have upwards of ten hours of just Richard being Richard, and I think that would be great to highlight who he was Mm -hmm. and just it's hilarious he was hilarious Mm -hmm. so we're gonna we're gonna try to put that together get a get that episode out i don't think it'll be in video form because i don't really do the whole video editing thing so but uh keep a keep a look out for that we're gonna try to get that put together so yeah he was he was definitely something fucking else alex (laughs) um yeah so what do we got to talk about today well, we talked about Game of Thrones yep. and how mad I was at that, and then and then we got real sad. Got got to got to bring this up. We got to bring this up. And then, I mean, what's on the horizon for us as far as the podcast? Or no, as just, just individually, like spring moving into summer. I'm going to a really kick-ass concert tomorrow. You are, and I'm unable to attend because I have a final to take. Yeah. Yep, that's a bummer because I remember telling you about it. and You're like, "Fuck yeah, I'm going." Yeah, and, I was I was immediately. Uh, and then you were committed. like, "Fuck, it's Wednesday. I have class," and I'm like, "Dude, just skip that class. It's, it's the one but, fucking class that yeah, I can't skip." Yeah, because so. I I tried to get her to let me take it last week because I was going to try and score some last minute tickets. Yeah, and she wouldn't let me take it a week at a time. Damn. So, um, that sucks. Yeah, you're you're gonna go to a kick ass concert tomorrow night. I'm gonna get my hair cut Thursday night. Mm-hmm. That's that's in the immediate future for me. I won't look homeless anymore. <laughs> you have your beard back. I do. I said that at LaFeeCon upon imme- immediately upon seeing you. Mm-hmm. I was like, you have your beard back. <laughs> Not hey, I missed you. <laughs> hey, nice face hair. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just I was like, you have your beard back. Good. <laughs> yeah i texted you last week miss you bb i'm gonna get it i'm gonna get i am gonna get the beard cleaned up a little bit because it is a little bit disheveled um but the the mullet flow is disappearing as of thursday oh thank god i thought you loved my mullet i mean i i i, I love you having a mullet it's it's a good source of entertainment so you want to know what made here, here's a positive. You want to know what made me decide to cut my hair? Huh? There is a the fact that I told you I have a temporary from Alabama with a legit mullet. That's part of it. But <laughs> you're like, um, I can't compete with that. Well, because I'm not, I'm not like when I grow my hair out, like I'm total, total slug mode. I'm mm-hmm. not committed to 
putting forth any effort whatsoever to like maintain it or I mean obviously I wash and condition my hair but like I'm not gonna fucking shave the sides of my head and trim the front so I can have legit mullet. You you just can't compete with that one hundred percent genuine Alabama heritage. I cannot. I cannot. Um <laughs> but uh so I was at work the other day and there's a certain person that I work not directly with, but I see regularly. They're not an IBEW member. They're one of the people that, that just work in the industry. And I, I can't, I, I loathe this guy. And I was studying him. <laughs> so he was running off at the mouth and I was just watching him, studying him, fueling my anger and hate. You know, the power of the dark side. Yes. And <laughs> like I was looking at his hat. Because it's one of those gay Patagonia hats. Oh. Yeah, he's one of those people. And I just happened to notice, much, like... Much like the Salt Life people. Yeah, well, yeah. They're just one of those. Yeah. <laughs> so I just happened to, like, re- like look... Like, start to look away from his hat, and I, I noticed that his hair was sticking out of the side of his hat. Just huh. like this. Huh. <laughs> and then I was like... <laughs> Wait a minute. And he turned around, and we have the same amount of hair in the back curling up out from underneath our hats and out of the sides. And I was like, no fucking way. I will not have hair like this, like that man, another day of my life because I loathe him that much. Damn. So I scheduled an appointment to get my hair cut. I drive downtown to Bernadette's. I park like two blocks away because it's in the evening. Normally, I get my hair cut like on the weekend so I can go first thing. So I had to park like way away and I fucking walk through the shitty weather that we've been having. And I walk in and I've gotten my hair cut there now for four years. And like every time, every time I grow my hair out, I get my hair cut so infrequently. There's a different person working the, the counter. Or like the little podium, if you want to call yeah, it. Yeah. The receptionist. And I walk in and she just gave me a look like, dude, it's almost 6 o'clock. Why are you here? Well, my appointment was at 6. And I said, I'm here for an appointment. She goes, oh, you must be Jamie. Nope, definitely not Jamie. I have both my hands. Um, Thank you. <laughs> and she said, well, what? what's your name? And I said, I told her my name. And I said, I had an appointment at 6. And she's like. With who? So the, the the girl that cuts my hair has a nickname in the shop. Mm-hmm. No one that goes there, or everyone that goes there except me calls her by that nickname. I call her by her name because I'm not a degenerate. And I don't like to call people by that unless they say, hey, call me, by, call me that because I don't like my name. Okay, cool. Yeah. And I said, my appointment's at 6 with Aaron, just the way that I scheduled it. And I pulled it up on my phone. And she, and she pulled it up on the computer, and she's like, your appointment is for the 21st, not today. And I said, well, if you will please refer to my digital device, it says <laughs> the 21st at 6 p.m. with Aaron. So there's something wrong on your end because this doesn't control nothing. Mm-hmm. And she basically told well, me to You just fu- said the 21st was on her end. What did she say then? The 26th. Okay. She was saying the 26th. Yeah. I was saying the 21st. You said 21st. Yep. We're, we're all clear. We're all clear. She was trying to say that I made the hair appointment the night of Endgame. Not happening. <laughs> I would not do that. Yeah. On my phone, it said the 21st at 6 p.m. with Aaron. And I was like, okay. You know, I, I just went to say, like, you know, please reschedule my appointment and I will come back. And she basically told me to fuck off and leave. Wow, that's a good business strategy. And I was like... Let's see if it plays out. And I <laughs> I was like, you know, I, I just kind of threw my hands up and went whatever. And I started to walk out and I turned around and I, sa- and, and I stopped and I said, you know what, go ahead and cancel that fucking appointment because I doubt I'll be back in this fucking place. And I left. And then the next day I'd reschedule my appointment. But um, <laughs> I didn't reschedule it with her, so... If she's there when I get my hair cut on Thursday, I'm going to be a dick. Like, I'm going to go out of my way 
to be a dick. Uh, desk girl, here, please. <laughs> this, this can seems right? to be empty. What? This is Bernadette's, right? Mm-hmm. I still haven't gone there. It's it's great. Uh, it's just great. the convenience of great clips. I will not get my hair cut in great clips. I'm I'm about over the way they fucked my beard up last time. That's why I don't go, my man. I was 14. The the month, actually the week that I lost my virginity. I'm getting ready to leave and go on vacation. Yes. Spring break. Yes. I need a haircut. I need Russians. to look what? Russian girls. Yes. I need to look fresh. I need to be I need to be on my A game. And I sit down in a chair at Great Clips. And I said the same thing that I have said for almost a decade. Now I get my hair cut different, but I always got my hair cut the same. Two on the back and sides, scissors on top, not super short. I hear the clippers start. Okay, she's going to do the back and sides like they always do. (laughs) What? (laughs) She buzzed my whole head, and I just sat there. And I was like, I will never come back. And I have never been back. (laughs) So I just started going there because one day I just happened to need a haircut. You used and, to get your hair cut at Master Cuts yeah, like me, and right? Yeah, and they were just unavailable. They, and I, I got so t- – and that had to happen to me like three or four times. That's where, why I quit going there. Yeah, they, they just became – every time I tried to go the first time, they were like, we're unavailable now, but you can get you can schedule an appointment. And I'm like, I used to come here because I didn't have to schedule an appointment. Yeah, I just walked in and waited 20 minutes and got my hair cut. Yeah, but it would always be like a three-hour wait for me. And so I'm like, no, nah, fuck this. So – I like one of those times I was just like, well, I need a haircut today, so I'm just gonna go to Great Clips. So I went to Great Clips, uh, found out about their check in thing, and I, I've just been doing that ever since. Mm-hmm. Um, this last time they're like, hey, you you have uh, on your on your um, on your record, you have beard beard care, beard trimming. Do you, would you like us to trim up your beard? And I'm like, yeah, fuck it, it's looking a little raggedy. Uh, I said I don't really want it like trimmed down. I just want it, you know, barely cleaned up and you know See, and evened that, out. That's one thing that the, the first couple times that Aaron trimmed my beard, Aaron uh, like all the girls that work at Bernadette's, the Third Street, not not the other location, but they all do beard care. But Aaron is the only one that does hot razor shaves. She's okay. the only one trained and licensed to do it. That's why I started going there in the first place because I could not find a barber, like a legit barber here in town that still did them. But she, I used to go every two weeks and get a haircut and get a hot razor shave before I grew the beard because I couldn't have one where I worked. Yeah. Um, and the first couple times when I grew the beard, Aaron trimmed it like it was almost the Great Clips experience, like taking it down super thin. You know, obviously – um, when, when people line them up and, and, you know, make everything symmetrical and, you know, sharp angles that look nice. Like I have a round face, all the sharp angles you can give me on the face zone are a positive because it makes my face look square and not round. Yeah. Um, but I, I like, there was a couple times that she spun me around and showed me and I was like, Ooh. Uh, so it took us a while to build that rapport of what I want out of a beard trimming. My experience this last week was she was like, oh, this – she noticed my cheeks were uneven. I was like, yeah, go ahead and even them out. About a week goes by, and I look in – I just happen to look in the mirror, and I notice one side is like damn near at like a – I don't know what angle this would be, but that. And then the other side is like – that oh i'm like what the fuck kind of evening out were you fucking doing Mm -hmm. what the fuck and like i already have a hard enough time when i look at my beard i don't know if it's just like the fact that i sit my head kind of cockeyed or some sometimes so uh when i i just happen to notice something's uneven so i'll try to i'll try to even it out and then on top of that so a lot of my hair underneath my chin grows like to my left Mm -hmm. or maybe to my right one of those ways so that contributes to the unevenness of my beard. Right. And it makes it look like part of it's growing faster than the other, which it is. Mm-hmm. Some of it is. But again, it's just like the unevenness of the way it grows and it's just – it's so stupid. And part I'm, of that's a trick of your eye. But mm-hmm. I mean because you got to remember our faces aren't all symmetrical. 
Yeah. That's but I, I can – you can visibly tell it's growing in a direction. Right. So therefore I have to constantly either brush it over in a different direction to make it look even or I have to trim it down. Yeah, the, the part – like obviously not my neck beard but the part under my chin, mm-hmm. instead of growing one direction like yours, mine grows opposite directions. So if I don't grow this spot in super thick, it looks like I have a bald spot. It's not a bald spot. It's just the hair growing opposite directions, yeah. and it looks real fucking dumb. I trimmed mine up last night to kind of hopefully rectify that a little bit for a short time, however long it takes to grow back and look stupid again. Um, I just I wish I could I wish I could just you know train it to go a different way. I just wish I could trim it myself well. Oh, I I'm pretty good at trimming it. I am not. It, it takes some practice, and I I do buzzers, like a lot of the the beardsmen. The beard smiths, if you will, <laughs> they prefer. They will tell you, don't use buzzers because uh, like you're you, saying clippers. Yeah, clippers. Don't. Um, I, when I say, when I hear clippers, I think scissors. So I just think scissors when I think scissors. I know. I get you. <laughs> I feel you. But I, I, yeah. So because clip, clip, clip. Yeah. Get I it. You. Yeah. Snip, snip, <laughs> snip. Same concept. Buzz, buzz, buzz. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. We're done here. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> um, no, so the buzzer clippers, um, supposedly you could take too much off at once, mm-hmm. and then you fuck up the whole thing. Right. And then you got to go down further, and it, it, it's a mess. Mm-hmm. I've been there. I've done that. I know. We have all done that. We have all done that, those who have beards, who have been blessed with Viking blood. Or Pol- something. Polish or, blood for po- you. Yeah, Polish blood. Jew. Jew. <laughs> I have the blood of the Jew. Jew. <laughs> um, however, I've gotten pretty good at it, but a lot of people prefer if you're going to trim your beard, trim with scissors mm-hmm. uh, because you can take little bits at a time and you can just go from there. And it then, is a pain though, for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I kind of – I really want to get a good pair of like beard trimming scissors, but I just haven't. I've got an extra pair. I'll give them to you. Sweet. Um, but yeah, I've, I just got – really good at sculpting my beard with with buzzers clippers <clears throat> yeah i do the standard because i like the square more mm-hmm. than the round obviously i already went over that yeah. so i literally just clip straight down on both sides of my face and then do my mustache line mm-hmm. those are the only things that i'll do well and i do this obviously yeah i actually bought one of those stupid template combs <laughs> Have you ever seen those yeah dude it's it's great oh yeah it's great to do just your cheek line it's incredible you just barely pick it up and just go. Oh. I could use that because, you know, so, like I nice. said, sometimes it ends up uneven. Mm-hmm. Well, and it's nice too. I mean, it, it's a pain to stand in the mirror and hold it and then get the other clipper, you know. Um, but once you get it at the angle you want, you just literally just hold it there for a second, just, <laughs> and it's done, mm-hmm. you know. And the nice thing about that is if you do go a little bit awry, you can just. Literally, just go a little bit farther down and just clean it right up. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not. It's not going to make you look like an idiot if you just lower your cheek line just a little bit more. So yeah, this is actually the probably one of the longest periods I've gone with a full beard as opposed to doing something stupid. Mm-hmm. I think. I mean, yeah, I trimmed most of it. and I just had a goatee for a while for like about a month, and then I grew it all back. Um, but like, I'm at this point where like I can't decide. Cause I'm I'm starting it, it's the all the unevenness and the directions and all that of my hair is just it's really starting to get to me and annoy me. So I'm like, part of me's like, do I want to do the admiral again, the mutton chops, or the mutton stash? Do I want to do that again? Do I just want to shave the whole fucking thing off and start over again? I don't know. I'm trying to hold off. I'm trying to stay strong and just keep growing the beard. I think you should do like the I want a fucking the, Viking beard. The Spanish naval commander, like really, really thin, just all the way, just like pencil thin. I've tried to pencil. I have tried to pencil it before. Uh, it's tough. I watched Nick Tor- Nick Torres did it once because uh, for I think summer shutdown we all decided to do like ridiculous facial hair. Like my buddy Alan Dawson and I. We went for like the more either white trash or America looks. Hell yeah! And uh, we the we all is, we all really went for our heritage because Nick he's not actually he's he's not actually Mexican. Is he Puerto Rican? 
he's Spanish. Okay. He is straight Spanish, not Mexican Spanish. Uh, a lot of like Spaniard heritage. Okay. Because uh, his his dad's side is from Spain, and his mom's side's American heritage. Or maybe it's the other way around. I can't remember either way. So so when he came, we all we all went to B Dubs like for like last day, and uh, Alan come. I come in, fucking straight up, mutton stash. You know, friendly chops as you will. The admiral, the sir, the gentleman. Yeah, you, you know what I'm talking about. Just the oh, chin yeah. missing, just the chin. I think you should just the Van do a soul Buren. patch. Yes, um, you should do just a soul patch. Oh God, <laughs> I'm not Joe. <laughs> just for one day. Ugh. So I come in there. I come in there with that. Alan comes in with the fucking Ricky from Trailer Park Boys. Yeah, <laughs> and yes. he pulled it off. He fucking pulled it off. Oh it was yeah, awesome. Uh, I believe there's a picture of all of us, and here comes Nick with his straight-up penciled-in stash. He looks like the goddamn godfather. Mm-hmm. I'm digging it. <laughs> it, was, it was awesome. It was really cool. Like, it was like one of the few times I respected him. <laughs> <laughs> Shout-out Nick Torres. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, like, I, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to hold strong because I really – I've been really trying to, you know, only trim like once a month, but then I'll notice the unevenness and I'll just trim it down and I, it ends up looking too clean. I just don't like the stragglers. Like, yeah, when same. you've got one hair, like you've got a little patch of hair that are all like an inch longer than the rest and you brush mm-hmm. it so it blends in and then you like 15 minutes later, it's like, pink. what I really hate is my mustache. I'll have like one, one or two random hairs that just mm-hmm. all of a sudden pop up. Mine are – I hate it when you get the – like the edge. Oh, I got that right now. And it's in your mouth. Like, god damn it. Then you try to trim them down, and then this the spot between your, your mutton – your mutton stash, your mustache and your beard mm-hmm. where it all connects and, you know, makes it look amazing, It, it then it starts thinning out and you look like a douche. Yep. <laughs> That's why I let Aaron do it now. She doesn't fuck it up because I fuck it up every time. Every time, especially, I try and – and and trim up the corner of my mouth mm-hmm. every time I fucked up, and like I like I like my soul patch to be very wide at the top, yep. and then very narrow as it meets. Like that's that's the little bit of manicuring that I really like to do with that, because um, otherwise I just let it go and just ignore it. Yeah, pretend it's not even there. I um, yeah I very I very rarely touch the soul patch. Yeah. See, you've got the strip where it's wide all the way down. I like to have it wide and narrow. I'm just trying to go for a straight up full fucking Viking beard. Are I've you gonna very unsuccessful? Are you gonna braid it? Nah, probably not. That's a, that's effort. Thirty percenter. You don't have to do it though. Miranda could braid it for you. Ooh. If I could get it long enough, yeah, I would. It really doesn't have to be that long. It just has to be long in places. <laughs> So, or I could just, you know, summon the power of thunder and just my, like ol- somebody else did not, uh, he did. And his beard got braided. It did. And that was it. And then, and then he it, was useless. It suited him up and it braided his beard. <laughs> that is he's all. Just, he's just Odin now. He's not even Thor. He's Odin now. Which is what he is in the comics. Right. I but, mean, the Odin force turned into the Thor force. I, I really I really like in the comics in the comics the old man Thor or I guess Odin. Yeah. However you want to say it. God of Thunder Thor. Yes. I just want characters that I like to be relevant. They will be. I don't like it when characters that I like are not relevant. Cuz that's the reason I like those characters to begin with cuz they're relevant. I feel like we we can – he said – Miranda said, okay, Thor. <laughs> yeah, that's the point. Um, I feel like we can venture into spoiler territory for Endgame. Anyone that's, listening, anyone that's listening right now, we are possibly going to inadvertently or on purpose utter Endgame spoiler stuff. So at any given time – we will warn you, but be prepared because we're probably going to talk about it. Yeah. and Which we've already gone full spoiler on Journey into Comics this week. Drop thank you. Yesterday. Um, 
I'm just going to go ahead and, and say it right now. This is a spoiler. I fucking hated Thor in Endgame. I hated fucking Lebowski he, Thor. He had a couple moments of comic relief that were good, and then there was a lot of bad. That's not what I want that character to I be, know, though. I know, man. He's not comic I, relief. I feel he's you. He's your heavy hitter. I feel you. But he's been comic relief for a while. For one movie. Okay, so I'm not even going to say he was – for this movie, he was comic relief. For the others, he was comedy, not comic relief. He was the funny, but he was also a main character that could fucking drive Would it. you say that he was the comedy in Infinity War? Here and there, yeah. Occasionally, yes. I will agree with However, you. However, he was he was the tragic character. He was the I need I need revenge character. I need vengeance. He never got vengeance. Not really, no. And that pissed me off. Cuz his despite getting like technically he did get vengeance, but no satisfaction. He did not no. avenge anyone. No, he did not. It, he, it was he it, cut Thanos's head off and then sulked for five years. He yeah he got he got his revenge for his for his failure, but his revenge meant nothing. Yeah. So therefore, it, it was just hollow. He accomplished nothing, and then he had the two two of the most powerful fucking items in all of Marvel comic history, and he. Did nothing against a spinny sword. Yeah, those those two things, Mjolnir and Stormbreaker, got severely nerfed for no reason. I'm I'm I like <clears throat> Ver Veronica and Sarah and I were talking day one of Lafikon after we had wrapped it up. Everyone was taken off. Um, you had already left. And we were just talking to, like, how uh, Sarah and I have a lot of the same perspective on almost everything. Just how abrasive we are. And, like, <laughs> yeah. Um, I love Sarah, but she's got a mean streak. Low tolerance for bullshit. Yeah. And, you know, just just Something general... pisses her off, she is pissed the yes. fuck off. Yep. So Sarah and I are very similar. Once um, she triggers, she is exploded. Oh, yeah. And... um. <laughs> You know, I went to – Veronica asked me a question, and I don't even remember what I said or what the question was. But my response was supposed to be I just hate everything. My response was I hate. <laughs> I forgot to say the rest of the sentence. <laughs> so – I hate. That's kind of my thing now. I just hate. Um, but like – so on Journey into Comics, the spoiler-free and the spoiler-rific, I'll say, uh, the spoiler-tastic, the spoiler-filled. Uh, I I really thought it was funny when all the like the vendors that were nearby and they heard we're about to go into in-game spoilers. They literally moved from opposite ends of the room. Yeah, like, they, they, they went, went and stood by the door. They went and stood by the door, which is way away. They're like, "Fuck this, can't do it." <laughs> um, which kind of sucked because I think mean, we. we Nate was like, let's let's kind of keep our voices down, you know. I mean, still at audible level for the microphones. AP yells. AP, so that no, was AP it. doesn't yell. He just talks, and his voice just carries. Mm -hmm. So, like, people that could hear or can't hear us, but they just hear out of context AP. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, the first half of Endgame, I was so, like, just unhappy with it. And it's not because I know. Was, it's not because it was emotional. It's not because the story was written poorly. It's just certain things. Lebowski Thor fucking dabbing Hulk. When Hulk dabbed in that movie, I almost got up and left. And I legitimately almost left. That is the, one of the... I've been telling people that. Hold on. That is one of the... In my opinion... Almost one of the worst representations of a character in any fiction ever. And I will not let it go. Be okay, so... You've been telling people. I'm going to say this, and I've been, I've been telling people this, that you said that you, would, you almost legitimately got up and left. You've been saying that publicly and to me and to other people. Uh, 
I've been telling people that like, like cause pe- some, for whatever reason, like everyone always asks me like, well, what did Tyler think of this? I'm like, I don't fucking know. I haven't been around him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh but luckily I, I could answer this time. Uh, I, I'd be like, yeah, he, like he, he liked the movie, but there was a point in the movie where he legitimately, where he says he about got up and left. And then I, I, I follow that with like, but I really can't in my heart believe you would have legitimately got up and left. So, but before I actually say that to you, which I just, <laughs> if, if you got up and left, say, say you were so fucking furious that you got up and left, which I don't see you actually doing. I was close. I feel like I you, really I feel like you're like, no, I have to stay, see this through. Say you did get up and leave. You're pissed. Would you have gone back to see it through? I would have tried to watch it all the way through. Because this is the end game. You, the, we've come too far for you to just fucking get, get pissed off and be like, no. Yeah. Because there's so much more to that movie. Like well, you, you had a whole three hours. So, like, just uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna just loop an hour and a half of this movie into the first act. Because to me, that's kind of how it, it shakes out in my head. The first act is really long, the second act is short, and then the third act ties everything up in a bow Mm -hmm. and finishes it. You know, you have that hard open, which you and I loved so much. Fuck. It was incredible. Um, Talk about really setting the fucking tone and and, setting you up. And not only that, so that puts you at the lowest of the lows. And then you see almost immediately fucking Scott Lang just boop. Oh no. And then it just fucking it just crushes you. Yeah. So so I am emotionally charged at that point. And then, you know, Scott rejoins the crew. You know, he's got wonky ideas. Tony wants no part of it. And I'm like, okay, they're gonna get this shit figured out because I knew what they were gonna say. We'll get Banner. Banner will help us. And I totally expected to see Banner. I see Professor Hulk. Okay. Weird flex, but okay. Let's see what happens here. And you get this frat boyish, egotistical, like just totally nonchalant, airheaded version of one of the most unique and and, and important characters in all of comics. And he dabs. Yeah, let me. That's say, when I. That that's why I almost got up and let left. Let me say this: <clears throat> you got to think about it. Think of how egotistical he was in Ragnarok. He was a fucking superstar in that arena. Okay. Hulk has an ego, especially now. That is, Professor Hulk is supposed to be all of Hulk's strengths, with Banner's intelligence. But in this particular one version of that it, it, i mean it's just it's just a combination of two it's, I get it's it. you get you get hulk's i get what it is you get hulk's e- like huge that doesn't mean it's good <laughs> i mean it, but it is what it is but it's not good <laughs> it is what it is though it is what you, it is you gotta take you gotta but take, it's not good if you're gonna if you're gonna combine the two that ego is gonna be somewhere and that that clearly unless banners intelligence overpowers the ego yeah. Well, we got um, popping in the comments. We got like we got nine a lot. Comments. Brandon, Brandon said it. Uh, he said, um, "It's a lot. It's a lot. It's one of Brandon and a lot of my wife Miranda." <laughs> so let's get the Brandon first because it was first and the longest. <laughs> it was Thor's want for revenge that caused the snap. He wanted all caps Thanos to know that to know he beat him before he finishes him. It was his fault. It's something villains typically do. Very good point. Mm-hmm. Then the hero prevails at the last second. The hero there was Thanos. Thor blamed himself, and then there was no winning. He sulked. Miranda goes on. It was showing his personality after five years of losing loved ones. It was supposed. It was supposed to be. It was. It wasn't supposed to be the Hulk we know. They were showing us how the snap affected everyone. His character was different. So was Hawkeye's. It all affected them differently. Hawkeye, yeah, you, that's fair. He wasn't any different. He was still the same character. He was yeah, Hawkeye was off. still the same, just like so, pissed. Yeah, uh, Natasha was still the same character. 
she's just been, frazzled. She's been foreshadowing that she loves the team and that she has a family now pretty much since she showed up in Iron Man, so that's irrelevant. Um, Scott Lang was the same character. Vision wasn't there. Um, Scott Lang hadn't been there to, to change, though. But it did change him. You know? It didn't change him. He just came into a world that he didn't know. So when he comes out of the quantum realm, he's fucked up. Not because of the quantum realm. Because to him, it was five hours. Okay. What do you think your mind is going to do in a place that you can't escape where no one else is for five hours? You are going to be thinking about your children being left behind, you being dead, everyone you care about being gone. You will never get out. He's fucked up. After five hours, I don't think that's – I mean maybe after a couple days. It's like five hours, I don't think your mind wanders that far. Well, I don't. I don't necessarily. See I mean, that, that's just that that's wandering. just my that's my perspective. I don't think it it goes to that le- that that level under normal normal circumstances. But being trapped in a place that no one else can get to except you is unprecedented. So, I think it's a little bit different circumstances. It could be, yeah. But, but um, I I get I get Lebowski Thor. I get it. What I will not accept, and you cannot justify to me, is two of the most powerful weapons in no, that universe no, I, and I are agree. irrelevant against a spinny sword. That I will not let go. Let me add a little bit more to that. Irrelevant against a spinny sword and the lack of the most powerful weapon in that universe, the Infinity Gauntlet. He does not have it. Nate Phillips' point, is he pissed off? Yes. Yeah. Did he just lose to them? Yes. That does not give you superpowers. No, but he is very skilled in the art of combat. He is. Spinny Sword, Stormbreaker. Electrocute him from the sky and then (laughs) cut him in half. Yeah. Done. Thor's also out of shape. He can still... (laughs) I don't know. He can still fucking call down thunder. For narrative purposes, you know. I get it. It is what it is. I get it. <laughs> I get it. But don't focus on it. Like, don't, like. No, I, I completely agree. Mjolnir and Stormbreaker, incredibly nerfed. Incredibly underwhelming. Yeah. Underpowered. Than- pissed me off. It pissed me off, too. Like, I, I get it. Thor was slow. Thanos is not slow. He's he big, was, but he's not slow. Thor was visibly slow. He was slow. I get it. Electrocute him. <laughs> slow him down. There's three of you. One really fast guy, another really fast and strong guy, an Electro Man. <laughs> Do it. Spinny sword. Oh, no! <laughs> I mean, that's... The spinning sword fucked up Captain Shield. Yeah, it cut which right makes sense. It. That's okay. That's okay. Vibranium might be strongest material on Earth, not the strongest material in the universe. Adamantium. But what's... Well, this universe does not have did not have the rights to adamantium I know. yet. <laughs> it does now, though. <laughs> vibranium, which I can't remember, was vibranium a thing in the comics, or was that yes. something made up for? Okay. No, 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 no. His shield was always made out of vibranium. <laughs> okay. Then why'd you say adamantium? Because people always say, like, in this, <laughs> okay, okay. people always say that the vibranium's the strongest. Well, no. It's it's on par with adamantium. Yeah. I mean, adamantium just doesn't have the, the, the vibration. <laughs> That's why it's vibranium. Vibranium. Yeah. We, we got through that together. I'm glad. We did it. We did it. Um, Yeah, it's just, and, and the people that I've had this conversation with, focus on the negative points that I that I talk about because mm-hmm. I think the negatives are important enough to highlight because no one else is highlighting them. I am that unpopular opinion guy and I'm going to I'm going to say it. Yeah. Was Hawkeye's role in this movie incredible? Yes. See, He's one of the MVPs. Your gripes with this movie, your major gripes are just my minor gripes, mm-hmm. which I have no major gripes. Yeah. It just it means 
my it, it, my major it has, gripe it has has a different meaning to you. Yes. I get it. Yeah, like you're you you definitely put a, a different level of importance um with it. Yeah. Me, I just I just I saw it as just just plot devices. It's part of the plot. Yeah, and th- and that's fine, know? but I'm going to I'm the point that I'm trying to make is I'm going to talk about them. Was this movie incredible? Absolutely. Was it's, the first half of the movie very good? In my opinion, no. Is time travel a good plot device? No. Time travel is an excuse for poor storytelling. Historically, can be, yes. Historically in fiction, time travel is a cop out. Mm-hmm. Am I saying that is what it is in this film? No. Maybe a little bit. But no. See, I, to me, the time travel aspect uh, added a fun sense of adventure. Right. And, but, and, and, and hold on. Uh, you I, 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 tell I, me to hold on. I'm waiting. I know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you don't have to be mean. <laughs> uh, I, I, I got, I kind of said it on JIC, but like I kind of eventually just, there was just so much nerd energy in that, oh, yeah. in that little space that like, I, I could not get anything I said was immediately drowned out. Well, I looked at you at one point and I, I was, know and I said, I was trying to I say said, something Get in there. And I was like, no. <laughs> and then my pet, my chance completely passed. I, I can't, can't, I can't even remember what I was trying to say. I don't remember either. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, um, what I th- I'm pretty sure I did actually get this out in JAC, but I want to reiterate, this movie felt the most like a comic book or a series of comic books than any other movie in the series to me. Mm-hmm. I would agree with because that. Because it, it, it had the zany, fun adventure that, that – it, it just felt like a fucking comic book. It, it felt straight out of comic books, and I loved it. I loved that fact. Yeah. Um. Do I think this movie is better than Infinity War? No, I don't. I, I, I do. From from specifically a movie standpoint, do I think it's better than Infinity War? No, I don't think the writing was as good. Um, were there more? Were there more um, like big fanfare moments? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Were there more? Were there more moments that were intended to bring you to your knees? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Just overall, as a um, Complete and quality movie. Endgame was not better than Infinity War. On par, yes, but not better than. I can definitely at least agree with on par. Yeah. Endgame or not Endgame, Infinity War. It it made me. It made you really root for the villain. Oh and yeah, then, that was Thanos' then, movie for and sure. And then we get and then we get the Empire Strikes Back ending where the the heroes are basically. On the on like they lose, they're, they're on the run, they're fucked. This in game, it's the heroes movie. They actually make Thanos a villain, mm-hmm. and that's because you're getting 2014 Thanos. It's a different Thanos. He is fresh off of losing uh, to the Avengers. Yeah, he and, took an L. And on he top took an L on top hard. of that, he's just he's just vicious. He's the Thanos we know from the comics. Because mm-hmm. uh, other at, than his obsession with death. Well, which they give no, yeah, that's what I was saying. They give they change. He changes it. He his goal now, after he finds out that he already wins. He, he decides. You know what? Fuck this. That's my destiny. I know I'm gonna win, but this time, since I, since I've seen everything now, I'm gonna I'm just gonna kill everyone. <laughs> and that is the Thanos we know. Mm-hmm. I mean, he still he still wants to create. He still wants the universe to thrive. But this time he's like, I see now uh, a, a plot hole in my plan. Uh, so here's what I'm going to do now. Mm-hmm. Which, by the way, never got touched on in our conversation, the nebula angle. I did not see that coming at all. Nebula. I didn't either. I really dug it. Nebula, like the two nebulas at once, they're – I don't. I don't know how it was. It's like there's something to do with like a server or something like within their head. Yeah, like her neural net. Her neural net somehow it. connected with the others. Because they're both net. existing at the same. Yeah, point. like some sort of wireless connection. They're, they're, the Wi-Fi fucking they're, be they, good. They 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 airdropped. <laughs> they fucking Apple airdropped to fucking each other. Screen shared that shit. NFC shit. <laughs> fucking Nebula's got a Chromecast in her head. <laughs> 
<laughs> she, uh, but that, that, I did not see that coming. I didn't either. I thought it, that, that is one of the few moments in the story that you have, that I think you have to praise as being totally unique, totally original. And that's where the time travel really gets good. Yes. That, well, that is when the time travel gets good, in my opinion. Um, Yeah, I, like, I'm a little bit biased because I fucking hate time travel. I think it's dumb. It's mm-hmm. It's been done for decades. I don't want to see yeah. time travel movies. I get it. The comedy centered around the time travel was fantastic. Hearing fucking Rhodey and, and Ant-Man fucking be like, wait a minute. Back to the future this shit? That's not how it works? Like, <laughs> that whole scene was incredible. Yeah, um, we got we have a lot of incredible scenes from the time travel. Mm-hmm. We got scenes that we normally wouldn't get, like Tony and Howard. Yeah, that was great. Uh, we get Captain America getting the shit kicked out of him by Captain America, <laughs> which was that. okay. That was that was okay. I'm, I wouldn't say that was the, one of the more hard hitting moments. Well, I, I really what no, but I think it is because, and I I said it during our little powwow. You see, past Cap. Just kick the fuck out of future Cap. Yeah. And it makes sense. Cap right. has been beaten. He's been broken. He's been embarrassed. Yeah. And he's lost everything. I can keep going all day. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, like, it's perfect. It's mm-hmm. perfect. We get Thor and Frigg. Yeah. That was tough for me. Yeah. that and that, Again, another incredible moment. Especially because, you know, that scene with Banner and the Ancient One... I really appreciated that. And then you get almost the same exact scene with Thor and Frigg because she knows. Yeah. The moment she sees him, she knows everything. You know, she can see into the future too. Mm-hmm. She knows. She knows that she's going to die that day. She just accepts it. Yeah. And she she's has like, to. you don't need to change anything for me. Just go, go on your own path. Change yourself. <laughs> yeah. Do it. So all those time travel scenes – Gave us something. They gave us moments that we normally wouldn't have. The Vormir one was tough. I, I've seen a lot of people complain about that here I, I have the no last couple days. That. Well, just because I think people didn't understand that to get the Soul Stone, there's one way to do it. Yeah. That's you got to pay the price. You got to pay the fucking troll. You got to pay the troll toll, essentially. Like, you want this? Get trolled. Obviously, they weren't going to do it, but what if they sent Cap there with somebody and he saw Red Skull? Because <laughs> there was all these reunions. Ha- Tony and Howard. You got – yeah, Tony, so you got Tony. Uh, Cap and Peggy. Cap and Peggy. You had uh, Thor and Frigg. Nebula and her fam. Yeah. The family. The fam damnly, as some people say. But he, just kill me, please. But with Nat and uh, Hawkeye, Hawkeye, his real name, Clint, Clint Barton, Nat, Nat and Clint, you don't get any reunion with anybody. It's you just, just get lost. You just you just see this guy that they don't know because he died supposedly died in the nineteen forties, and then then you get them fighting over who gets to die. I think I think now that we've seen the Red Skull again. I think it sets up, uh, you know, an easy way to bring him back in the future. Speaking of that, Loki. It, they just set up the TV show. Yeah, all they, they did. did you they, know? they and did. that's cool. Because I, I thought so for a second. I was like, oh shit, he's he he managed to get out of it. He changed things, and now he now. But then I was like, oh, wait, but they went back in time further and got the thing, so he didn't get a chance to get it. But then I'm like, wait. Cap has to take it back to that time, so then he still gets it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he just – he created a parallel universe is all he did, mm-hmm. you know, as the Ancient One describes. Um, that, that'll that be the TV show. That'll be cool. I, I accepted Tom Hiddleston's death in Infinity War when it happened. <laughs> Me too. Um, uh, I, I other, like the character. Other people haven't. And that's fine. Looking you know. at you, Miranda. Uh, I mean I, I appreciate the character. The character was there – solely so Thor could have more character development. I'm sorry. That's the only reason Loki was around. To be a throwaway villain. He's not a throwaway villain, though. He's a throwaway villain in a, in 
uh, the original Avengers movie. He's not in the original Avengers movie, but throughout the entire series. He's only in one movie that matters. He's a villain that they make you care about because he was lied to his entire life. Yeah, well, he was lied to as a child. Yeah. So, I mean, he's pr- he's pretty much over the fact that he's he's a fucking frost giant. Oh, yeah, I mean, he's he's one of those characters that just teeters back and forth between um He's not a he's not a villain, he's an anti-hero. Yeah, he he, he teeters he teeters between villain and anti-hero. Yeah. Uh so the, therefore you you kind of you root for him at times. Yeah. I mean, you you got to root for him. Yeah. But he's gone. He's dead. He's gone. He's, he's fu- gone. He's dead. As I refer to, he is fucking dead. He's fucking dead. He's gone. Not coming back. They're like, like Miranda's like, he's, they've got to find a way to bring him back. They got to find a way. I'm like, Thor's not going to bring him uh, back. I, and then there's all the whole, the whole Infinity Stone and reversing that, or Soul Stone and reversing the snap and all that. I was like, oh, the, so he'll come back. It's like, no, he died before that. He's fucking dead. He's dead. He's gone. Black Widow, she's fucking dead. She's Gamora, gone. or well. 2018 Gamora. She gone. She's, she's fucking dead. She gone. She done. She done. Dunzo. Capital D Dunzo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Capital G Gonzo. She's fucking left the building, folks. Yeah. And you know, not the way we wanted to die. Her to die. We wanted her die to mean, or we wanted her to die. We wanted her death to mean the return of Hulk. In both movies. Mm-hmm. Didn't get that. However, Hulk was pissed. Professor yeah, Hulk was pissed, but he was he wasn't pissed enough. No. Because so the scene the scene with him and the gauntlet and the snap, I really appreciated that because it it was all of the ego gone. It was Banner in control and not Hulk. Hulk just taking the damage and Banner being in control. That's how Professor Hulk's supposed to work. Um, logic and reasoning and, and brain. Yeah. Um, he couldn't bring her back and he tried. And the final battle, we get um, Hulk running and then we don't see him again. Pretty upset about that. That's part of the reason I'm pissed. You got one of your heavy hitters who mm-hmm. is slightly damaged. That's fine. He's got more than one hand, and the fucker hits hard. Yeah. So, let me see Hulk smashing some minions. Didn't see it. Um. But yeah. I, so that, I guess Howard the Duck was in that scene? Yes. I haven't seen that yet, but... Wow. Yeah. I, didn't, I don't even remember seeing the Ravagers at all. Me either. Me either. So... I need I need to get, go back to that message in our group chat and like find whatever the talk. He's clearly in the bottom right hand corner. Yeah, run him with a gun. I, yeah, I haven't I haven't seen that. I was at work and no signal. So, um, so yeah, that the the Hulk snap was was really powerful for me, and I I totally expected other people to put on the gauntlet, so. I, I definitely didn't think that Barton was going to put the gauntlet on, but when you see Black Panther grab the gauntlet, I thought that fucker was putting it on. <laughs> yeah. When Spidey grabs it, he's not going to put it on. But when Captain Marvel put the gauntlet on, I thought, well, fuck, this is over. You know? She might not even use it, but she's got it. Yeah. You know? Start fucking murking people. Yeah. Didn't happen. You know? Put it on so no one can take it away from you. No, there is no one there that's going to take it away from you. I get it. Plot. Uh, some stuff's just dumb, and you gotta you gotta accept it for being dumb. So, Giant Man was cool. Mm-hmm. Extra, extra large Giant Man. I really liked seeing <laughs> um, Wasp as much as we did. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm I'm a big Evangeline Lilly fan, so I enjoyed seeing uh, Valkyrie on her Pegasus. Oh yeah, that was cool. We never got that fucking spear, yeah. just slicing and dicing. I enjoyed seeing I enjoyed seeing Korg in the the short time we saw Korg. Mm-hmm. Wasn't he carrying Meek? 
Yeah, he just had Meek. But he was he was also dressed up as Taika Waititi. Yes, like he like how he normally would dress. I, I want to see more Meek. <laughs> Meek just fucking triple quadruple fisting pizza because mm-hmm. he's got multiple fucking arms. Yep. Um, I I will say this: I wanted to see an after credit scene, not a serious one that connects anything, but like just like you're at some, it's just pow, poof. Camera shot. Camera starts right in front of a house, kid's bedroom. Yeah, kids, kids, fucking. Or and all. You see, you you just see like a a thunder crash through the house, and it's and it's you go. It camera pans into the fucking kid's room, and it's just talk. And it's this kid talking shit, playing video games, and here's Thor, there to scare the shit out of Fat Thor. <laughs> Still Fat Thor, and it's like we and we get that moment of like. He he went to that kid's house. <laughs> yeah, I would have appreciated that. Uh, that. And that's the that's the stupid after credit scene we get. That's yeah. the only bullshit we get. That was funny. I mean that that scene was funny. Yeah. When Cord couldn't talk shit, so he had Thor do it. Which I've done that. I've had people do that before. I've, I'll play the game while someone talks shit for me. Mm-hmm. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, what else? What else did I really dig? So it's not all negative. Um. Seeing Cap with fucking Mjolnir was real cool. Yeah. It was real cool. Watching him fight Thanos with Mjolnir was real cool. Didn't mean anything, but it was really cool. Um, yeah. Seeing seeing everybody come back the way that they did, you know, with mm-hmm. with Sam opening with On Your Left. You yeah. Know, that. As soon as I heard that, I'm like. That felt good. It felt real good. I would have liked to see a little bit more Winter Soldier besides one scene of him and Rocket shooting. Yeah, which we didn't even get really the tag team partnership that they had in Infinity War. Mm -mm. I mean, you got that fucking metal arm. You don't just have to shoot people. (laughs) Like, you're going to fuck some people up. So, I don't know. I Don't misunderstand me. I obviously loved Endgame. Yes. The first half of the movie, because I care, I care about this. I, I, and and I had an expectation going into Endgame from the spoiler-free reviews that I had read that it was perfect in every way, and that in my mind, Marvel had found a way to replace Star Wars as my number one, um, and they did not do that to me. See, the problem I had was like the first 20 minutes when they, when it, so we get a hard open, Marvel opening, and then, then right into it. And we get, and then they're, they're defeated. Uh, we got, we get the Tony scene. We get the back to Avengers headquarters scene. And then, and then we get the plotting scene, which leads to the Thanos scene. That, that's all within like 20, 30 minutes. Like that's, that's real quick. All of it, and the, up until the five years later scene or intro, it just all seemed like really hollow. Oh, and it was extremely rushed. That was it was rushed and hollow. And I'm like, man, this is the pacing on this is weird, mm-hmm. and it just seems hollow. Like I'm feeling nothing from this. Mm-hmm. I feel absolutely nothing from. Now this. I will say the one the one kind of saving grace of that that sequence of scenes is when they they focus on Thanos in the garden. Mm-hmm. You know, he's fucking just beaten. Fucking wrecked. Watching him limp and and the way that he's scarred and he fucker can't even make soup. Like, yes. That is storytelling without an mm-hmm. ounce of dialogue. You knew what that fucker did. See, because in the in the trailers when they say he used the stones again. Okay. In my mind, did he try and bring Gamora back? Possibly. Did he change reality? To be honest, like I didn't even think about that line. Did he fall and go back in time? Like, did he fall to his death and fucking reverse time? I don't know. But it made sense. And then it's, uh, use the stones to destroy the stones. Which I liked. I liked that he did. I like that. But uh, again, that entire scene just felt hollow. 
even even him even Thor like fucking decapitating him felt hollow. Yeah. Like him chopping off the arm, chopping off the gauntlet like felt hollow. Every every aspect of that just felt hollow and no feeling made me feel nothing and I didn't want to none of this part none of this movie I wanted to feel nothing. I went into this movie knowing I was going to feel things and I felt nothing there, especially after the hard opening. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the things that Scott and I were talking about the other day, because Ruby was watching the new Mary Poppins movie, mm-hmm. and it was after we had watched Endgame, so obviously it's fresh, I'm thinking about it. There are there are scenes in Endgame that are supposed to mean things, or like mean something to you, that did not mean more than, than Yondu saying, I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. He was your father, but he wasn't your daddy. You know, like mm-hmm. Yondu hit it more than a lot of the big heavy hitter scenes in Endgame. So I think it was great. I think it was fantastic. The first half is rough for me as a person. If you give a shit about it, it might feel the same for you. Um, yeah. I think they where this movie really shines on top of like the incredible third act um, where this movie really shines is all the little things, mm-hmm. all the fan service they did, all the little tiny things that they added in there. Like, like the battle, the, like post battle in New York where you just don't even think about it. Like, Oh, here's Hydra shield coming in, you know, to take the scepter and all that. Like, you don't think about that shit. Like mm-hmm. where did the scepter go? When it makes sense, like it, who, it who ties they up, up a lot of loose ends too, because yeah. at, the, at the beginning of um, at the beginning of Age of Ultron, it's like, okay, why does this Hydra dude have Loki's scepter? Yeah, but then it's like if you watch Winter Soldier, you go, right. oh yeah, Shield is Hydra, right? So, but I never like obviously, you know, you can you see the line drawn in the sand there. It's like, okay. They were Hydra. That's how they had the scepter. But in Age of Ultron, it's just like I remember watching that and being like, like, okay, Shield was Hydra, but like, they haven't taken care of this yet. Like, why's this motherfucker got the scepter? You know. So they t- they they closed a lot of doors on a lot of stuff. Yeah. So just some of them they slammed instead of closing, <laughs> and it was bad. So the way I felt about Infinity War, I loved it. I saw it twice in theaters. Loved it immensely both times. Mm-hmm. As soon as it comes out on Blu-ray and I watch it at home, not the same. Infinity War? Yeah. See, I mean, that's how I, I was with Last Jedi. I still loved it. I still loved it. Don't get me wrong. But like every time I've watched Infinity War at home, I just don't have the same love for it that I had in the theaters. And I, I don't, and I'm not attributing that to the, the environment and, and setting that I was in, you know, like the experience of the theater. I'm not attributing it to that. I'm just like, okay, I've seen it, whatever. That's that's how I'm feeling. I I really I want to know how Endgame translates. After as far I, as after, Phase Four. Oh no no no! You mean from theater to home. from theater to home in terms of like I've seen this already. Um, where there are a lot of movies where like I can't fucking wait till it's out on, so I can watch this at home again and again and again. Right. Like when I watched Infinity War again, I was like, "Cool." It's just a really good movie. It's just a I mean, good it's just. Let me rephrase that. It's just a really solid movie. Yeah. Because I remember, you know, when when you and I left Infinity War, because I saw it once with you and I saw it once with Brandon. I saw it once with you and once with Miranda. Um. When, when Brandon and I left the theater, we had a we talked a, about a lot. When you and I left the theater, we both had the same reaction. We want to talk about things, but we need we need to process process what the fuck just happened. Yeah, and I have not seen an Endgame again since I saw it on Friday. Yeah, same. I don't know that I'm going to. I really want to see it again. Just because I, I want, I want initially, I want to I, digest all those little things that I didn't get to 
see the first one. Well, initially, I told Skylar when we were leaving the theater, you know, I can't wait to see this movie again. But now that I've thought about a lot of the stuff and I've analyzed and, you know, I've had three different conversations with people about it over an hour pretty much, I don't know that I need to. Yeah. I don't know that I want to. Yeah, I definitely didn't get this much discussion between between viewings of Infinity War. Uh, I've – one, I've I, – I, LaFiCon all weekend. We right. talked about it. Uh, I come into work yesterday, talked about uh, – yesterday was really fucked up because I not only had an end game to talk about. I had Game of Thrones to talk about, and there are people there that I could talk both with. There are people there I can only talk one with, right? Um, so that I get that kind of did help it out because, like, okay, I could get my Game of Thrones fix over here, and I get my End Game. Like, I could get both over here, but I'm gonna go with End Game over here. Uh, with Brandon, I got a, a good mixture of both. I I, I want to sit down and talk End Game with Brandon when I get the chance or when when he's available. Mm-hmm. I know he's busy, much like the rest of us. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, realistically, I'll see it again before it's out of theaters. I mean, and then I'll watch it again when yeah. it comes. You know. Well, the my big thing with Infinity War was like I just I didn't even dive into the movie again. I just went straight into the special features. Really, all the extras. I I watched every bit of it because I I wanted to dive into that movie. And I'm going to do the exact same thing with this one. Yeah. All the deleted scenes, bloopers, behind the scenes. Yeah, I, lo- I, I really look forward to seeing what they cut from the film. Because I will say this. If this movie, if they added 30 to 45 minutes more of runtime, I would have sat in the theater and watched it. No oh, absolutely. Um, and I think that maybe if they had 30 minutes, let's just go on the low end. If they had 20 to 30 more minutes of runtime... They might have been able to do some stuff to make that first act, at Bearable. least that first 20 minutes, not feel so hollow for people like us. Yeah. And for people like me, maybe give a little bit more substance to that first act instead of – part of the reason I hate the Hulk scene in the diner so much is it, it totally felt unnatural. It felt forced. They were trying to make you laugh. Comedians do not try and make you laugh. They make you laugh. Mm-hmm. They don't try; they just do. They just do it. Yeah. And I don't know how it was for your your um, theater, anyway. But my my, my theater, I was the loudest person in the theater. Okay, my theater was very vocal, very involved. We clapped as a theater. We uh, there was none of that. There was more than once that we stood up and clapped, like the theater stood up, mm-hmm. you know, standing ovation style. Um. During the th- the Hulk diner scene, there was about two people in the theater that laughed. So it evidently wasn't See, very funny. I mean, you, we had some laughs. I, I, I really don't remember much in terms of the audience because, like I said, my audience was very just focused on the movie. They didn't – if they were reacting, they were reacting internally. Mm-hmm. Um. I was the loudest person there. I was the one like leaning over to Miranda, go, "Oh fuck yeah!" And then I'm like, "This this is about to happen. I think this is about to happen." Like, whole shit. Okay, this means this. Like, I was just I was that asshole in the theater, like just talking to my wife, like and just going. I, I didn't oh, even. Fuck yeah. I didn't even whisper. There was more than once in the theater, you know, where I just like, oh no. Yeah, there, there, or, or fucking, oh shit! Oh yeah, same. Like uh, there was a couple of exclamations, like, oh fuck! <laughs> you hear me in the theater? Oh fuck! <laughs> there is, there is one character specifically, and and their level involvement or lack of involvement, uh, if you will, that I think you and I both agree on and appreciate. It's how little Captain Marvel was in the movie, mm-hmm. and it's not because we dislike the character. It's not because we like. Dislike Brie Larson, which I kind of dislike Brie Larson. I like Brie Larson. She's she's better better than Olivia Munn, but not by much. A lot better, uh, I think. No, um, she has the act the the scope. Her range is about the same range as that boom mic stand. <laughs> she's, I mean, she can do about two things, and that's okay. Some actors are that way. I'm not. 
I'm not shitting on Brie Larson. I just don't really care for her. Um, Captain Marvel saw the big picture in this movie, and that was there are th- billions of planets out there, and not all of them have you. And she's the only she one straight one up that said could be that. everywhere. Really, yeah. She can she can go to those planets. She can help them out. That she sees the bigger picture. Mm-hmm. She's like, you guys have your own journey. If you need me, hey, I'll what? help. I'll help if I can. But hey, I gotta I gotta head out to this shit because you know stuff stuff um <laughs> so her her lack of involvement throughout the film i totally appreciated that the things that were forced in the movie i think you and i agree on and if she would have been more involved it would have felt even more forced yeah and unnecessary because i'm really glad that she went toe to toe with thanos and just didn't completely overwhelm him she I'm should gl- have though. i'm well she should have but you know I'm glad she didn't because that added an extra level of, wow, Thanos is really this strong. Right. It makes sense. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I didn't, I was, that was one of the things I was fearing was she was going to come here, come into this movie, and, and we all know how much of a fucking powerhouse she is. She is the nuclear weapon. She is the football. It's like, it, she, she, I mean, and once again, her superpower, her, her ultimate main move superpower is, I'm going to destroy this giant ass ship. She does it just by flying through it. Just by flying through it. She um, her her main her main attack is destroy giant ship. We get that. That's totally cool. But I don't want her being the end all be all deterrent. I want her to serve her purpose. Cool. Giant ship destroyed. Fight Thanos. I don't want her to fucking wreck Thanos. I did really appreciate the I want there to be struggle. I did really appreciate the pack a punch headbutt though. Mm-hmm. Like Thanos pack a punched himself with the Infinity Gauntlet, like having all the power ups on fucking Nazi zombies, <laughs> Call of Duty, and just fucking headbutts her, and he do- she doesn't move at all. She just takes it and fucking looks at him like, "Is that all you got?" The one thing that I don't like about that scene is she's trying to take the gauntlet away from him, and she rears back to punch him. And just stays like this. And that gives, like, I'm going to punch you if you don't let go. <laughs> like, don't give him the chance. Yeah. Kill him. I don't remember that, but. If you if you watch where they're, they're tussling and he takes the power stone out and then punches her. I like that. I really enjoy that too, but. He, I never, that, that's not even a move you think of. He you, only punched her because she did this. I'm going to fucking punch you. Mm-hmm. You don't even think you you never think about oh stones can be removed from the infinity. Yeah, gauntlet. they're not permanent. At least not in this gauntlet. Right. So like you don't even think oh they're just gonna rem- like fucking clutch move Thanos. Good mm-hmm. job. Just fucking cold. Bold costume. strategy. Let's see if that oh bold strategy. God, let's see if that pays off. Oh shit, it did. <laughs> <laughs> e whoa, what a doozy there. Damn. <laughs> Yeah, I, I really enjoyed that. Um, and then, you know, obviously that had to happen for to set up what happens next. Mm-hmm. You know, I I called uh, Tony being the one to sacrifice. Yeah. You know, I called Cap retiring. So, not that I'm being smug about it in any in any no. way, because that's not what I, that's not what my intention here. Um, I think we we got the endings we wanted. From... I think we got the the only ending that worked. Mm-hmm. Because if Cap would have sacrificed himself the way that Tony did, you would not have had that satisfaction of Cap finally getting to retire and not have to fight anymore. And that would like in so many ways that is so satisfying to me to just you finally did it. You don't have to fight anymore. Like, it's just for his character, to, his whole arc from the first Avenger all the way to Endgame, there is n- there is no other way that you could have done that and it mm-hmm. been good. And just think, so he stayed back in time. So all those years he had gained from being thawed until then, those are still there. So his age definitely extended i mean he he probably definitely has a a bit of 
fountain of youth gene going on with the super serum. Super serum. Like he, he definitely doesn't probably doesn't age as fast as most people. Mm-mm. But given the fact that uh, he thawed out and then and then got to live for well over a decade, 70 years. Well, I mean, at thawing out until 2019. Oh, oh okay, okay. Or 2024. I, I thought you I thought you were saying no. 1940 to 2024 was over a decade. That was like well, so essentially well, well, yes, Blaine, that is over a decade. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> so him going back in time, that actually probably makes him about 140. Mhm. That and that's nuts. Yep. I mean, the ice probably definitely slowed things down. <laughs> I would say they brought him to a halt. Yeah. But him not going in the ice, wouldn't that change the timeline a little bit? No, because he was in the ice. Oh, so he probably went back right after. Mm-hmm. It's like, hey, bro, I'm here. <laughs> What's up? So do you think he's going to – director – I would like to see Rogers or Cap. I I said no. the dumbest thing yesterday. I said director Cap, <laughs> <laughs> director Captain. <laughs> oh, that's dumb. I, I would now that now that Tony, you know, initially I said that I would like to see some some Stark AI. Um, I want to see if 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 Peter and Rhodey have to have AI. I want it to be Friday. Yeah, I don't want that voice actress to lose her job because so Robert Downey Jr. Can... We all thought he was going to be coming AI. And and I think that would have been cool. But now that he's gone and, you know, between the I love you 3000 and the cheeseburgers and mm. I I I number one I can't take that anymore. That's yeah. that's part of the reason I'm I'm thinking about not going to see the movie again. I just saw a meme it was like is like me to my future kid, and it's like a some black dude just yelling at his kid. It's like, tell me you love me three thousand. <laughs> yes. Um. It's it's done. Scarlet's gone. Robert Downey Jr.'s gone. Chris Evans is gone. Let the people that have a hold that are steering the ship right now, let them shine and let them continue to shine. Mm-hmm. You know, especially like. Um, you know Chris Evans, Chadwick Boseman, you know Brie Larson now. I mean those, obviously Mark Ruffalo. I th- I think I I'm, I am going to stand by that he is going to or he needs to maintain the I'm a I'm a companion character instead of being uh, a solo. I I don't want any more Hulk movies. Yeah, I just I just want what what we've been given from that character. Minus frat boy Hulk, but yeah, I, I it just it, everything makes sense. Tony from Iron Man all the way to Endgame, Cap from the first Avenger to Endgame, um, you know Scarlett Johansson's character development, which we didn't get in the beginning, but over the last five movies, we've definitely got everything that we need. You know, it, it's it's not a super complex character, so yeah, the basically the original three. I'm gonna say, include not including Thor. Um, just makes sense that it was that way, and and I I would probably be pissed if it didn't shake out that way. So, I mean, I mean, how did you feel? I mean, how did you feel when Tony put the gauntlet on and said, "I am Iron Man," and snapped? I knew he was gonna say. I mean, because he paused so long. I'm like, he's gonna say Iron Man. <laughs> he's gonna say it. It was a really awesome moment, but I that awesomeness had it carried with it some consequence. It had consequence. It had some consequence and weight to it. And I knew it. I knew it. I was like, this is it. This is gonna kill me, but this is it. Like fuck yeah, this is it. Fuck yeah, spread it. And then we get possibly one of the most beautifully fucking thought out and written things. We get Pepper. I mean, okay, first we get Spider Man and that's for me that part was fleeting and yeah, cool. I could we, care less. we got it. What meant the most to me was Pepper talking to him and saying and you know, the fact that he Tony's not saying anything at this point. He's just there. He tries to say like three words and can't. Yeah, he's he's just there. Um he's he's hanging on and you know, he's just there. And you you don't really 
I guess you probably don't even think about why he's still alive until Pepper says it. He, she says, it, it's okay. We're okay now. You can rest. And it's like, fuck. And then that's when he it's like finally relaxes. and. Well, and they, they foreshadowed that at the beginning of the film when he figured out time travel. And she said, you won't be able to rest if you don't go do this. Yeah. So you can rest now. And then that's when he's like, that's when you see him fade away and die. And I think that was so fucking powerful. Oh, it was poetic. And so poetic. And like, I, that, that, that's what hit me the most, not him dying with the fact that he could finally rest. Like, this is something we'd been, he's been like, I mean, on top, not like not even including his like trying to right the wrongs of his of his industry, like not not trying to right the wrongs of oh shit, I just sold a bunch of fucking weapons to terrorists and all that shit. I'm talking like post Battle of New York, all that stress and uh, PTSD, PTSD, and then moving on to the Ultron shit and like him like trying to rectify. The battle in New York by putting a suit of armor around the earth, as he said. Um, that that's all the shit. That is the shit, and that's it's it's plagued his mind ever since Battle in New York. So, like for for Pepper to be like, you can rest now. Like it's it's okay. We're gonna be fine. Like it, it's. It's so cool because as a character, like as his wife, you you would think she wants him to live. Like you can't – no, no. Like typically you get, no, no, don't leave us. You can't – you can't die. Like – and you get that that struggle and frustration within a character. But no, you she accepts that it's time. He did what he had to do and, you know, he – and he's going to be gone. She it, And she's okay with – she has solace with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just the fact that she's like, you can go. I, I'll be okay. We'll all be okay. You can go. Like, it sucks, but you did your part. It's the only way they could have done it. Yeah, and I, I thought it was so fucking beautiful. And that, that to me, hit hit home more than him actually dying. I mean, which still carried a ton of weight, but goddamn – and mm-hmm. then, you, of course, you get all the funeral stuff, which was just like, God damn, you can have all the ki- all the cheeseburgers you want, kid. Fuck! <laughs> mm. uh, what a somber ending, but such a good ending. It's the ending we deserved. Yeah. It's it's everything that we wanted. It's everything that we deserved. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't I don't know what else I can say about the ending other than they they did it not only not only is this movie um you know an icon uh an unprecedented event you know never done but ne- nothing of this scale has ever done been done before and then you end it poetically and just responsibly you know, they didn't let Tony get the gun and snap and just fly around and fucking pew pew. You know, yeah. It 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 ended. What I mean, what more can you want for as a fan? Just a just a fucking fiction, mm-hmm. not even of the genre, just a fiction. What more can you want? The happy ending is not always the right ending. Yeah. So. Fuck. And that that I know Miranda was just devastated. She's like, I get I get why he like I get why he died, but like I just don't accept that he did die. It's the one. Yeah. You know, I know. that 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 just split second where you see Tony look at Strange and it's you know, he's got his hand up and then it's just one. Tony knows. Mm-hmm. Tony is willing to sacrifice. Tony has been the one character besides Captain America that every time there has been some, a, a challenge they cannot overcome, he's willing to throw his life away. 
He flew into space with a nuke. He tried to hold a city on his back. Yeah. Tried to protect the Earth, and he protected everyone by giving his life. And if Cap would have done it, you expect Cap to do it, and it wouldn't have carried as much weight. And I've been saying that since the first Avengers movie. It always had to be Tony. Mm hmm. So. Yeah. You know, and, and it, it carries that much more weight because the theme of the the end of Infinity War with Captain America and Vision is we don't trade lives. That's Cap saying, we don't trade lives. Tony didn't give a shit. He had to do it. And he always had yeah. to be the one to do it. Yeah. Well said. Thank you. Very well said. It makes me very sad. <laughs> I know. Like, I, I don't. I'm, I, I know the reason I'm probably not going to see it within another week or two is just <laughs> recovery. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, like I said a second ago, this is never, nothing of this scope has ever been done before. 22 movies over, you know, two decades. And to keep them so cohesive. Not two decades, but a decade worth of material. To look that to look so far in the future and be able to guide and navigate and end right there at that point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No one else has ever done anything yeah. like that. And it'll, I think it'll be, you know, one of the things that has me weary about Phase Four of the MCU is what are they what are they going to do next? It it's either going to not they're either going to aim high and not hit their mark, or they're going to they're going to go so high. That then they can't top themselves. I mean, what what else can you do? What else can you tear away from me? Yeah. So. All right, we're getting we're getting to that point. So we have one more quick topic. Wow. Okay. Is, is this the thing that we agree on? Yes. Okay. So uh, last week. Uh, the final trailer for Godzilla: King of the Monsters dropped, and uh, I wondered. I didn't know this was it, but go ahead. What? Godzilla. Oh. <laughs> so we're we're both we're both in agreement. We're both ready to see this movie. Yes. We're ready to see some fucking Godzilla Ghidorah action. Mm-hmm. Well, not just Godzilla Ghidorah. I want to see the supporting monsters oh, too yeah, because they absolutely. matter. They matter, they, folks. They do. Ro- Rodan. Looks ridiculously cool. I think Mothra look. This this is probably my favorite Which version of Mothra ever. A lot of people ever. are pissed off about the look of Mothra. I don't I, give a I, shit. I don't give a shit either. I think it looks cool. It's it looks updated. more like a moth instead of a butterfly. Yes, I dig that. Yes. So yeah, we we're getting all that. There's a lot of. I'm I'm super hyped. I want to see. I, I it's one of those movies where, like Endgame, like they're giving us a bunch of shit, but you're you're not. You don't know how all that shit coincides with each other mm-hmm. like endgame all those trailers told you pretty much nothing this movie you see a lot of shit but you don't know how it all goes together well and i, I we need to highlight too you know we talked about it a little bit on saturday at LafiCon. i don't i mean whatever direction they want to take this godzilla universe that's fine um you know I loved fucking 97 Godzilla, mm-hmm. much like you did. I'm a fan of not just the the this um, this character, I guess, this fucking mashup of characters. I'm a fan of the fucking monster fight, fight em up movies. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I dig them. I always have, and I think I always will. Um, I don't need all the plot and all the the human centric stories. Mm-hmm. I just want to see Godzilla fight other big fucking monsters, man. So even though in the trailers and much like they did with, um, did it come out in twenty fourteen? Yeah, twenty fourteen Godzilla with the Brian Cranston bullshit. I I don't really care. I mean, as much as I hated Brian Cranston, I still loved that movie because I just ignored that all of the. Yeah. The human element even existed. I just want to see big fucking monsters fight. The thing is, that movie is all about the human element. I know. Not, not Brian Cranston, but just the human reaction. I know. 
the the human they it was a natural disaster movie not a monster brawler thank you and we need more monster brawlers <laughs> this is i'm pretty sure that's what we're getting with this movie well and which is uh, yeah i i kind of in this last trailer and the trailer before i kind of got the vibe that this is kind of a spiritual to a spiritual successor to godzilla destroy all monsters yeah this is basically the modern reboot of that movie while not be being labeled as that movie. So I, I I'm does this movie mean as much as the end game? Hell no. <laughs> no, is it's just movie... about, it's just mindless fun. Yeah. For it, us. Yeah. Unless it it's absolutely spectacular, then it becomes less mindless. Um so here here's the thing I, I want I told you before we started this that I wanted to bring something up that we would totally be in agreement on that you would probably not agree you probably wouldn't even think so you hated brian cranston because mm-hmm. you hate brian cranston mm-hmm. i hate how they used him as a uh a draw yes they used him they they used him his breaking bad fucking signature i'm emotional and i'm yelling they 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 completely exploited that mm-hmm. and 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 brought and and did nothing with it. He should have been if he was going to be a part of that movie. He needed to be more part of that movie than he was. Underutilized. I mean, you, you probably don't want to hear that. I think he's overutilized, but I think I thought if 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 you're going to have if that, you're gonna, if you're going to hype somebody up as being a character in a movie, they need to be a character yeah, in the movie. They if made they're it, not going to be in it very long, it needs to hold weight. They made it look like he was the movie mm-hmm. aside from Godzilla. Right. And they they did nothing with Aaron Taylor Johnson in the trailers. Yep. Which I'm okay with Aaron Taylor Johnson yeah. in that movie. I think yeah, he did a good same, job. Same. Um but you could have given me a lot more Godzilla and Oh, a definitely. lot less Aaron Taylor Johnson, and it been just as good a movie. Definitely. So again, this was it's it's the human response yep. to to disaster a natural movie. disaster. I love I love that you label it as a disaster. Oh, movie. absolutely, because all the perspectives you you don't get the monster brawl. Mm-mm. You get people watching the monster brawl, right? <laughs> you and you get these these fucking shots where you can you get the scale of things. And Gareth Edwards did fantastic with that. Mm-hmm. Um, my fear is that that is exact. They're they're doing with Millie Bobby Brown. Talking about eleven, eleven, Bobby Millie Brown, wh- whatever her fucking name is. Brown Millie Bobby. Brown Millie Bobby. <laughs> Brown Bobby Millie. Um, I feel like they're they're exploiting her. <clears throat> I am a girl. I'm a young girl, and I'm screaming. From Stranger Things, mm-hmm. just like they exploited Brian Cranston, I'm emotional and I'm and I'm, I'm yelling and I'm yelling from Breaking Bad, right? Because that was fresh off of Breaking Bad, right? Um, I fear that they because that's all you see in this in the trailers is fucking Eleven screaming more, which is all she does in Stranger Things besides be confused and learning things and her nose bleed and her nose bleeds because she just did psychic shit. <laughs> Like, I'm almost like I swear to God, if I see her nosebleed, I'm walking out of the theater. <laughs> there's I'll a lot of you. <laughs> there's a lot of the cast um, from the trailers and stuff that I've seen that I really, really like. Yeah. So, th- so that's but okay. All we see of her is her ah, just yelling, screaming, and and I I one thousand percent agree with you because from what we've seen right now, what we know at this point in time, you could replace that actress 11 Mm -hmm. with any other young female actress in hollywood and the character probably mean exactly the same yeah but no other character in hollywood does that iconic i'm screaming and yeah 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 right there with you my man uh so yeah that that was my like us, I, I, that, that's a bonding moment. I really us. appreciate that because <laughs> Cause, I, no, because like dis, I, despite how much I love Brian Cranston, how much I love Bri- Breaking Bad particularly, I agree with you on his role in Godzilla. They exploited the shit out of his 
signature move. Well, and let's let's go even farther with Lawrence Fishburne and Predators. We've talked oh, about yeah. that one before too. That pissed me off so much. Stop, he was like, stop bamboozling us with stop the trailers. Doing, yes, stop doing the bait and switch. If you're going to if you're going to put iconic actors in roles to fill characters, give them some fucking substance. Make them carry some weight. Yep. Meet those boys up. Yeah. Put all the meat on it. Mm-hmm. And if the shark's going to come, it's going to have a feast. It's going to eat. <laughs> shark's going to eat. That's, uh, yeah, that's all I wanted to say. But, I well, I totally too. appreciate that. Yeah. Like, I, I'm going to be... Like, like, like I said, I'll pull a page from your book, and I'll fucking walk out of that theater if I see her fucking nosebleed because she's screaming. <laughs> I'm probably going to leave if her nose bleeds. I'm kidding. I won't do that because I, I just want to. I want to see the full movie, but I'll be pissed because yeah. like that. That's just. It's just that is poor writing. That is poor execution and writing. Like you could have utilized. How do you think they feel as act? How do you think Brian Cranston feels about his role in that movie? How do you think Millie Bobby Brown? Millie Bobby Brown, Millie Brown, Millie Brown, Bobby. How do you think she feel? How do you think she's gonna feel if she if that's what ended up happening? Like, I don't think I don't think Brian Cranston gives a shit. But he probably doesn't. But, but Ricky her, Bobby, Ricky Bobby probably gives a shit. <laughs> she she's young enough where she this is this is her career. It's gonna matter to her and, career. And and this is she's like, what am I a fucking joke to you people? Mm-hmm. Like oh, cool. this is this is a role that a lot of people are gonna cast off and throw away. Yeah, because but as far up as, until now, she's just been Stranger Things. But as far as directors and producers go, moving forward, this movie will matter to her career. Yeah, as much as it should not, because it's a fucking Godzilla movie, but it will matter to her career. Yeah. So. So that's that. That's all I got to say. That's all I got to say about that. Um, we're gonna go ahead and close this episode. Uh. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you, Tyler, for coming back. Thank you. <laughs> Returning. Who knows how long this will last. <laughs> Don't say it that way. <laughs> um, yeah, hopefully hopefully you can keep coming back for more. I mean, I got a couple more weeks of school, and then it's going to go back to normal. Sweet. Awesome. Just got to get through May. Awesome. Uh, so, yeah. Again, uh, big shout out to uh, good old Rolo the Destroyer. R.I.P. White Cheddar, Cheddar White, Richard Olovich. Uh, here's to you, buddy. Uh, if that is all, that is all. Please make every day a big dick day, and please check us out live every Tuesday on Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube. Uh, you can check out exclusive content such as Game of King Chair every Thursday live on those same feeds, and it comes out an audio form on Friday on the Podcastrophe feed. So if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe to Podcastrophe and you will get Game of King Chair where we chronicle and review each episode of the final season of Game of Thrones. Um, it's been a, it's been a great time so far. This week we're going to have Brandon and Nick on again. Nick, of course, being on because he's a co-host. <laughs> and... Uh, then we we uh, we have another guest as well, so we're gonna we're gonna break down the Battle of Winterfell, the Long Night. So please check that out. If you're listening to this on in audio form, you will get this tomorrow. Uh, and definitely big thank big shout out and thank you to the Journey into Comics Network, where there are a ton of amazing shows like Journey into Comics, like Brews with Dudes, and all the other shows. Um, we also have a Patreon. Patreon.com slash podcastrophy. Uh, just anything helps. I'm, I'm not going to go through the tiers. I'm not going to go through our goals. Uh, whatever you want to pledge, pledge it. I mean, even if it's as low as a dollar, it's there. And it helps us out tremendously. So uh, uh, if you have like a spare buck or two per month, shoot it over to us. You know, we really appreciate it and it helps us out a ton. So again, if that is all, that is all. Please make every day. A big dick day. Later. Bye, guys. Goes. I'm a lesbian seagull. And I'm flying so high. Over a sea 
full of seagulls. For one to catch my eyes, so I can cook them. 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 Well, Lama had a heterosexual bald eagle. I'm flying over this land. But I might be bisexual. I'm looking for a woman or another man. So I can cook a hookum. So I can cook a hookum. So I can cook a hookum. So I can cook a Then my favorite verse. I'm a hermaphroditic panda. Kind of like Jamie Lee Curtis. I was born with both a vagina and an abnormally tiny penis. But they cut it off, oh, they cut it off. I can't get hard, I'm always soft. <laughs> oh, they cut it off, oh, they cut it off. I'm never hard, I'm always soft. Oh, yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody.